So we got a potential matchup. It's in the works for April, and that's mm-hmm. going to be Hamzat Chemaev versus Gilbert Dorino Burns. Major step up for Hamzat. I think this signifies a couple of things, but most importantly, it signifies the UFC's fast track of Hamzat Chemaev. Gilbert Burns fought for the title not that long ago. He's squarely in the top five. He's a guy that if you beat him, you're likely getting in there with the champion next. So this is telling me that the UFC has seen all they need to see with regards to how good Hamzat actually is. And now they're ready to usher him right to the front of the line. Yeah, and it's weird because we always have to listen to what Dana White says. And he's always willing to change his mind and, and switch up his plans. But he did say... He's three or four fights away from a title. And if you beat Gilbert Burns, there really isn't three or four more fights between Gilbert and the champion for right. you to have. Not three or four more people there. Yeah, unless you decide to go back into the rankings. And I think that everybody knows, including the, the matchmakers at the UFC, that Hamza Chemaev has the skills to hang with the, the champ and, and all the top contenders that are up there, Gilbert Burns included. But I, I feel like the reason they want to give him three or four more fights is more of a growing, you know, aspect like a let's let this guy's star continue to grow he's making leaps and bounds and he's only had what four bouts in yeah. the ufc so let's keep him keep this momentum going because once we get to the title we're at the top we can't go any higher and one thing that we say all the time and fans were all guilty of it is our favorite part of a fighter's career is the rise it's to it's the road to the belt once right. they get to the belt they've proven to us that they're the best in the world and all of that and then the ride is still very fun from then but it's not quite as exciting and just like uh almost feels surreal as the rise to the top. Also, when you talk about this fight alone, Gilbert Burns might be the most difficult matchup in the 170 division for Hamzat Chemaev. Yeah, oh no, I think you're absolutely right. Hamzat Chemaev not only is the most promising prospect in the division, but I think he's the most promising prospect in all of the sport. Yeah. And I thought, I took Dana at his word when he said, look, we got three or four more fights for this guy. We're going to build him. And like you said, the rise of the fighter is everybody's favorite part. Of course, a great champion like a George St. Pierre or an Anderson Silva that has just this momentous run as the champion. That's really something to behold. But those people are very few and far between. And even still, a lot of the time, their rise to the top even though Anderson came over and already had name recognition, so he was fast-tracked maybe quicker than anybody, the rise is still something that builds. It builds excitement. There's potential energy there instead of kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. You're hoping that the floodgates can open and this person can explode into the fighter that you think that they are, whereas when they've already eclipsed that mountain, you, you already know how good they are, but actually finding out in real time and being along for the ride of somebody is something really fun and something to be said for that. Talking about the matchup specifically, as you mentioned, Gilbert Burns could possibly be the toughest matchup in the division for Hamzat, and that is because he's such a good grappler. Hamzat came into the division, and you know his thing was, I take guys down and I smash them, and he so far has been successful in taking down and beating the crap out of every opponent that he fought, sans Gerald Mears chart, who he starched with one punch. Yeah. So I don't know how easy that's going to be for him to do to Gilbert Burns. That's going to be tough. Gilbert Dorino Burns is an ADCC veteran. If, for those of you that don't know out there, ADCC is the premier no-gi submission grappling tournament in all the world. It's like the Olympics of submission grappling. It only comes around once every couple of years. He's a black belt world champion in the gi. He's as versed as you get on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if Hamzat's able to come in, hold Gilbert Burns down, and ground and pound him, then my goodness, there, there is no three or four fight rise at that point. As you said, it's straight into the champion, and that takes the original plan and rips it up. Yeah, and every, every division in the UFC has, a, uh, has obviously like a, a favorable style. And I would say like the 45ers, they're known as like some of the best strikers. That division might have the best strikers yeah, in it. I think so. I think the 170 division has some of the best grapplers and wrestlers. And if, if Hamza Jemayev is able to do what he's been doing to somebody like Gilbert Burns, who sits at the top of all the grapplers in one of the most uh, grappling heavy divisions, it's going to show us a lot. And we're going to realize very soon that we can't even put him in there in the octagon with people that aren't literally the champ or the number one contenders. You know, if if he goes in there and beats Gilbert Burns the way he's beaten everybody else, 
it would be unsafe for him to fight anybody that's not named Colby Covington and, and Kamar Usman. So now you don't have that three or four fight cushion where you get to build him. And uh, th- that build is what I feel is most important to Dana because you've got a real star in your hands. This guy's got crazy star power. He's like a hybrid between Khabib and Connor. He's got the skills and the scariness of Khabib, that aura around him. But he also likes that brash you know, trash talker and then come back it up aspect of what Connor does. He's a perfect blend of both of them. Superstar written all over him. And, you know, the rise is very much like a, a band. Yeah. A band, uh, people that, you know, see bands that they liked get really famous and then they all don't like them anymore. That's kind of, yeah. it's like what you see in fighters. Yeah. People are like, oh, I knew about this guy. And they want to tell their friends like, oh, you need to watch the UFC this weekend. And there's this new guy. Right. There's always this new guy. And Conor McGregor was one of them. You know, at one point, George St. Pierre was one of them. All these people at one point were the new guy. And people that were in the circle of MMA were convincing their friends like, hey, you know, you might like this name or that name, but wait till you see this new guy. And they like to be proven right by, you know, betting on early somebody like Hamzat Chemaev. So that's why I like the rise. And I think they should slow the pace down a little bit. I want to see this fight, but... I think there are actually more fun matchups for him and we could see a better build. Obviously a fight between Gilbert and Hamzat is one the fans are going to love and one that is actually compelling because we know how good his skills are and we are convinced that Gilbert Burns has what it takes to at least take him into somewhat of different waters, maybe the second round if we're lucky. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, just to play devil's advocate here, if there is one disappointing thing about this whole ordeal is that the fight is slated for April 9th. Uh, You know, Hamzat Chemaev is the guy that really wants to be active. He wants to be in there every weekend, according to him. So to have him take this much time in between fights, I understand that, you know, a win over Gilbert Burns literally sets you up for a title shot. So there's really no need to fill something in between. But I was kind of hoping to see like an early year performance, maybe here in Houston uh, in February, maybe something in January or early March, perhaps. But unfortunately, we're not going to get that. The only other name that I could throw in there that maybe he could do in the interim, or if he were to beat Gilbert to fight in the interim for the number one contender spot would be like a Vicente Luque, somebody like that who's young and up and coming, has a lot of potential as well. But other than that, when you think about it, Wonderboy, is is pretty much done as far as title runs go. Colby Covington just lost for the second time. He's got a date with Jorge Masvidal. Gilbert Burns lost to Kamaru, and it wasn't really a compelling fight to do a rematch immediately. So when you think about who the hell is Kamaru Usman going to fight next, he kind of actually needs to sit back and let some things unfold. Mm -hmm. So just for the uh, expediency of moving the division along, I would have hoped that Luke and Chemaev could have gotten something on before uh, April, or, or there could have been something that basically either moved somebody up the queue or moved somebody back down the queue so that Kamaru's next opponent became a little bit more clear to us. Although the champion at 55, Charles Oliveira is saying he'd go up to fight him. I don't really think there's much buzz to that, and I don't know how desperate the fans, including myself, would be to see something like that. Yeah, it would be fun. I, I always like the champ champ run, but uh, Charles is doing all the right things. He's calling for those big fights and more power to him. I don't really see that happening for him next. I think there's plenty of uh, stuff for him to do at 155 to keep his hands full. But uh, Usman definitely needs a good dance partner. I think Hamzat Chemaev's the guy. And if it's not him, it's Leon Edwards. But if you're talking about doing numbers, if you're talking about a true competition, I think Hamzat is the guy for Usman. I think you're going to see a great fight whenever those guys do match up. And I happen to think it's going to be at the end of this year. And it's probably going to, it's definitely going to be for the title because Usman's not giving that thing up to anybody anytime soon. No, yeah. And it'll be, he'll probably fight Leon next. And then they'll see how Hamzat versus uh, Gilbert shakes out. And then the person holding the bag may actually end up being Luke. Yeah, it'll be awesome. But either way, I'm excited. Hopefully they make this announcement soon. If not, they make an announcement with Hamzat's name on it sooner than later because. We're guilty of it, but it's Hamza at his yeah. must-watch TV, and we're not getting enough of him these days. Once we see an official poster come mm-hmm. out with the the Barnhill, or not, <sighs> with Hamza Chemaev 
versus somebody, even if it's not official yet, but the posters are circulating on social media and Ariel Helwani tells us that they're in discussions, mm -hmm. we go ahead and cut a video on it. So I'm, I'm hopeful that it'll materialize. Not done yet, but I think it will be shortly. Yeah, and a poster, you said, with the Barnhill Brothers. A poster with the Barnhill Brothers and Hamzat Jemayev in the middle, maybe for an interview one day. That would be a cool poster as well. Yeah, we'll keep <laughs> you guys posted on that one. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, guys, if you're into combat sports content, we really appreciate appreciate a subscribe to our channel and a like on this video if you haven't already. Until the next one, have a great day. Peace.